Okay friends, to get started on this job, one of the first things we have to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. After that, we're going to remove all of our lug nuts and the wheel. Now that the wheel's off, we have a nice clear view of our tie rods here. We have the outer tie rod, the inner tie rod. In between those two, you have a jam nut. You can use a 7 8 wrench to try to break this free. I'm just going to use these long pliers. There we are. Once it's broken free, we can continue on to removing our outer tie rod and nut. Let's use our 18 millimeter socket on this. Blast that right off of there. We'll set this aside. Now the next thing I want to do is try to separate the outer tie rod end from the knuckle here. Typically, I like to just use the nut on there. It's completely up to you. I just started on a couple threads. I'm going to give this a couple loving bonks to try to break it free. Remove that nut. Separate your tie rod from the knuckle. Now we're just going to unscrew the outer tie rod end from the inner tie rod end. Of course, we're going to make sure that we put this back in the same positions. So you just want to make sure you count the amount of turns it takes to remove the outer tie rod end. One, two, and so on. Three, one. All right, set this aside. Now let's remove our jam nut right here. Follow that inner tie rod end up to the boot. You're going to find a clamp. Go ahead and remove that outer clamp. Okay, so now that we have the outer clamp off, we're going to continue on to removing the inner clamp. That's going to be the clamp that holds the boot onto the rack itself. Commonly, you can just take a pry bar, you're going to stick it right on there, and then you'll give it a couple loving bonks to break it free. There we are. Let's go ahead and grab onto that boot. We'll give it a couple twists and try to remove it from the inner tie rod end. Now, once you have it off of there, you want to make sure that you inspect it. Make sure it's still soft and pliable so it can function properly, and also make sure that it's not damaged in any way. Let's set this aside. Now, since I'm doing the left side inner tie rod end, I'm going to go ahead and turn the steering wheel to the right, and that's going to make it so I can access that inner tie rod end. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is start unscrewing the inner tie rod end from the rack itself. To do that, it's easiest with an inner tie rod end tool. They make different ones that look differently. This one, essentially, I'm just going to go ahead and put it right over this. I'll tighten it up so it's as tight as can be, and then we can start turning this to the left to release it from the rack. Stick this extension in here. All right, now that I have it broken free, I can remove my tool. Get the tool off of here. There it is, friends. Now let's just inspect the rack right along here. You want to make sure that the threaded area going into there is still in good condition. It's not full of grease because, of course, we want to make sure that when we install our new inner tie rod end, it's going to stay in there. Let's use a rag. Make sure I clean it out. Okay, friends, now it's time to install your brand new inner tie rod end. You're probably going to notice that I put a little bit of blue thread locker on this. We'll call it your prerogative if you want to or not, but definitely don't use red thread locker. Let's go ahead and take this tie rod end. We'll start it in by hand. We'll bottom it out and then we'll snug it up with our tool. All right, now when we tighten this, you essentially just want to go till it feels like it bottoms out and then just give it a little bit extra. You don't want to go ahead and put too much pressure on this and damage the rack. Get our tool off of here. Let's get this jam nut out of here. Set that aside. In with your inner tie rod, you're gonna see it came with a little grease packet. This is gonna be very important. You wanna make sure that you put the grease all inside this ball and socket area. Once you get it in there, just go ahead and work it around completely, but save yourself a teeny bit for a little later and I'll show you why. Just want it right in there. It's gonna help keep moisture out of there and keep the tie rod going strong for a long period of time. Straighten out your wheel. Okay, now it's time to use that grease again, and we're going to go right along this lip of the tie rod end, right where you can see the groove there. That's essentially where the outer portion of your bellow boots is going to be, and this is going to help the alignment professional in the future. Now it's time to reinstall our bellows boot here. If you don't have a clamp to go on this, you can use a wire tie. 
I'm just going to go ahead and start this right on here. We'll keep it nice and loose and then we'll slide it onto the rack. It's loose enough. Bring it right over that inner tie rod end so it slides over. Push this all the way in and then put it onto the rack inside there. Once you have it on the rack, we're gonna tighten up that wire tie. We're gonna try to make this nice and tight. That's gonna help keep the moisture and debris out of there. Trim off the excess. Now let's put on our outer clamp here. Slide that right up and into position. Perfect. Copper never sees. Get the jam nut on there. Now it's time to put on our outer tie rod end. Let's go ahead and take this. We'll start it on. And when we screw it on, we want to put it on the same amount of threads as it took to remove it. One, two, three, and so on. All right, now we can take this. We'll slide it right up and into the knuckle. Grab your tie rod end nut. Put it on there and we'll snug this up. Now we'll torque this to 40 foot pounds. The next thing you want to pay attention to is the slots that are on the nut right here. You want to make sure that they line up with the hole that's on the tie rod end stud itself. If it isn't, you need to continue tightening the nut until the very next slot does. After that, go ahead and put your cotter pin in here and lock it down. Let's bottom this out. Now the next thing I want to do is use a wrench to try to hold onto this tie rod so it can't spin on me. And then of course, I'll just kind of lock this down. This on here. This on here. All right, it's bottomed out. <clears throat> Teeny bit more, make sure it can't free up on its own. And then you just want to make sure that you level out the tie rod end here. If it's twisted, it could bind and that can cause an issue while you're driving down the road. This looks good. Let's get our wheel up on here. Start on all of your lug nuts, then we'll bottom them out. Once they're bottomed out, we'll get the wheel on the ground and then we'll torque them all to 100 foot pounds. Torqued. Okay, friends, we got our tie rod back in there. What's left to do now? Now you're going to go ahead and safely get yourself down to your local alignment shop.